I'm kind of having to hold this in place right now, mostly because if I don't, it'll do that. This does not want to stay on my head correctly because these straps won't adjust or they're just way too stretched out. One of the two. So, we are on all that. Um, but, before we get into that, I did want to touch on a few of the things that have been One Piece related. So, uh, we got a few more cast members announced for the live action. I just wanted to touch on that for a minute. So, we got uh, Mr. Zero and Miss All Sunday. So, we got Crocodile Chopper, or sorry, Crocodile and Robin. Um, we, got, we got a sneak peek of Chopper as well. So, the, this little sneak peek of Chopper and Drum Island we got are like, okay... We'll see what's going on here. We'll see what happens. So for uh, Crocodile, the actor who was cast to play Crocodile is Joe Manganiello, who I've actually heard of before, who's another one of these cast members that are just like, I know who they are. Um, he's been in some of the Magic Mike movies. He's had a very good film and TV career. He also just loves D&D because I've seen him on The Big Bang Theory before. Um, and he was in an episode about D&D playing himself. Um, <laughs> And I'm kind of thinking some of the casting department may have seen some of the photo shoots he's done because he's done photo shoots where he's had cigars, which is very crocodile-esque. And uh, he also likes animals. And that seems to also be like a crocodile-esque thing because we've had like at least two cover pages of the One Piece story uh, of the ser throughout the series of crocodile being nice to animals, which is adorable. I apologize if I sound stuffed up right now. There is some god-awful, horrid pollen in the air right now that is kicking my butt. And if there are random cuts in this, it's because I'm sneezing or having a coughing attack. I have had a runny nose all week, and it's not fun, and my voice just sounds hoarse. So I apologize for that. Um, so we got Crocodile, and we also got Robin, as I said. Um, so we have Lara Adova. I apologize if I butchered her name. I looked to see if she'd been anything. She's been in a few things. She's like a Russian actress, uh, which it works because uh, uh, Oda has stated that uh, Robin would be from Russia. If she was from our world, that would be where she would come from. Um, and a lot of the pictures that uh, people have found of <laughs> Abova or of uh, Lara is uh, her with her hand resting on her, with her chin resting in her hand, which is a very Robin thing to do. Um, going all the way back to when we first met her as Miss All Sunday and when she first joined the crew. So there's that. Um, I wanted to point those out. And of course, the, they did the little sneak peek of the live action chopper um, since they're doing the table read. Uh, I, got, I saw that video earlier, so those are just adorable. A <sighs> um, couple of other things I wanted to point out that are Lego related and that I had kind of thought about after last week, but still apply because the majority of this chapter takes place in a giant Lego castle. Just outside of a giant town that seems to be made of Legos. Um, uh, so, I wanted to point out that there is an Ed Sheeran song, I like Ed Sheeran, that is called Lego House. And the extra funny bit is that in the music video for it, Rupert Grint, a.k.a. Ronald Weasley from the Harry Potter movies, is in it as a fan who is obsessed with trying to meet Ed Sheeran. And, of course, they're both, you know, Irish, you know, redheads and everything like that. So there's so many jokes about, you know, Rupert Grint and him. And, like, I think they became, either they were friends or they became friends during the video. Um, but, like, yeah, Rupert Grint, went, you know, was in the video and everything and plays this obsessed fan. So that's just kind of fun. And uh, uh, there's a meme that goes with this that is, uh, it's a comment that was posted on the, like, on the actual official uh, page for Lego House for the video or something, that it was someone who had made a YouTube account under the name of Molly Weasley, and I swear to God, if they did this just for this joke, I applaud them. And if they already had this account because they're just really big Molly Weasley fans, because why the heck not? She's awesome. Um, but have we had anyone in the, in the story named Molly? I don't remember if we've had anyone in One Piece named Molly. Then again, you know, I don't know. That's not necessarily a Japanese name, but, you know, neither is Robin. 
uh, to, to go with that. Neither is Tony Tony Chopper uh, and a bunch of other stuff. It's not a, a Japanese name. Um, but uh, sh there's a comment that they did that is the joke on the, uh, the Howler letter that Ron gets at Hogwarts after him and Harry fly the, uh, the flying Ford Anglia into the uh, Whomping Willow. So, uh, and I'm going to attempt to do this in my best Molly Weasley voice. We'll see how my uh, throat lasts and hopefully I can get through the rest of the video afterwards. <sighs> Ronald Weasley, how dare you steal that car? <laughs> no. I went for it. Uh, Ronald Weasley, how dare you star in a muggle music video? I am absolutely disgusted. Your father is facing an inquiry at work, and it's entirely your fault. If you step another toe out of line, we'll bring you home. We'll bring you straight home. Oh, and Ed, dear, congratulations on another great song. <laughs> I really hope that whoever made that account has, like, has this, like, meme framed somewhere in their house because I would if I was that person um but there's that also I wanted to point out that um here in Nebraska in Lincoln or, or in Nebraska in general we have a thing that is called brick days so uh that is completely all centered around Lego and it takes place at one of our big um event centers on the edge of Lincoln and my nephew loves going because he loves Legos. Um, and I had mentioned to him that there's, like, the last chapter ended with Nami and, like, a giant Lego house castle thing. And now this chapter mostly takes place in the Lego house and the Lego castle. And he's like, because <gasps> he's, he's starting to watch One Piece. He's not even out of the East Blue yet, I don't think. Um, and he keeps getting sidetracked by other anime. Um, but... Yeah, so he was happy about that. And there's also a giant hedgehog in this video, uh, in this uh, chapter, which my sister loved. So, hedgehog. Um, that'll come back later. Uh, but, so, we have brick days, so there's that. And the other thing that I wanted, the other couple of bits that I wanted to point out for this is that the only straw hats we see in this chapter are the original crew from the East Blue. Which is very nostalgic because those are, of course, the ones who, you know, going into the Grand Line, they're the ones that made that promise on the barrel as they were going up the, going, you know, getting ready to go up Reverse Mountain. Which the live action did a very good job of, like, you know, redoing it. Um, although I, I think it would be a little more climactic if they did it while they were going up Reverse Mountain or just before they went up Reverse Mountain. But I, I was fine with where they put it in in the live action. Uh, but... So they're the ones that made the original promise. And this is kind of demonstrating how much stronger they've gotten since then. But also, it's the, the they're the ones that were the, the, the ones who originally met Dorian Bragi way back on, you know, uh, way back on Little Garden along with Vivi and Karu. Uh, so they're, you know, there's the first ones to land on Elbeth. And, you know, like we know that Robin and Frankie and uh, Brooke and uh, Jimbe are on their way. But we don't know where Chopper is yet because we didn't see him in this chapter because he's not in this chapter and he wasn't on the ship at the end of the last chapter with the Giants. So I hope the Giants aren't going to try to eat Chopper. That would not be good. Um, well, good news. We've made a teaser for the live action trailer that has for the live action that has Chopper in it. And the Giants have now eaten Chopper. Really, Oda? Uh, no, that, I, I, that's, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but, like, so there's, like, nostalgic there with, like, the, the, these are the original, the original core five, and then, you know, subsequently we've had so many others added to it. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. <sighs> going into the actual chapter. So, chapter 1127, titled Adventure in the Land of Mystery. So we start off the chapter with the chapter cover page, which is the continuation of you know, Yamato's, you know, journey around Wano. And Yamato has found his way to the beaches of Curry, where he is now sitting and eating rice balls. Sitting and eating onigiri, very Zoro, uh, with uh, Inarashi, who has now been made the uh, daimyo of Curry. So that's another one that will get added in, as he's now the daimyo of Curry. And he is also very concerned about all of these kidnappings and disappearances that have been happening within, um, you know, the 
you know, the Kibi region and now the Curry region and such. So he's like, hmm, well, that's not good. So, and, and so Yamato is just kind of gathering information in this regard. So I'm assuming Yamato is probably going to help with solving these murders. Well, they're not murders, they're just kidnappings, which is not good either way, but you get the idea. And then we go into the actual chapter. So we start the chapter in one of the giant villages that also seems to be made of these giant Lego type bricks. Um, and so one of the thoughts that we, that I know that was going around last week when the chapter first came up and we were seeing Nami inside of this Lego castle was like, okay, is she in like a Lego castle that would be like a Lego sized castle, like comparative scale for us? like that or is it this is just actually a giant lego castle that is built for giants for giants to be in and therefore nami is just going to seem extra small in this giant giant thing because we saw how like small they were compared to like just the couches and the food that were on the great eric uh in the last couple of chapters so there's that but we cut into the giant village where we see all of these giants running around and they're like oh no there's a fire because we see smoke billowing out of the forest and they're like get some spring water and put it out and then there's this lady that's just like hey do you smell that aroma <laughs> it's like uh that's that's uh, gonna come back in a bad way later um and they're like is it coming from the forest if the flames spread to Yggdrasil, then the country's done for it's like we need to report this to the great sun god <laughs> so we get another shot we see more smoke coming out of the out of the forest off in the distance we see a few more shots of some of these giant houses that also seem to have like lego plants around them and then we see this giant tree that is clearly supposed to be this representation of yggdrasil which is of course the world tree and i wanted to bring this up because um i have a book here of myths and legends from all around the world and uh, there's some Norse ones in here, and it does have one about Yggdrasil. This is the tree that they use in the book. I don't know if I've done, if I've used this in a video before, but that's the tree that they have in the book. And this is a tree that I have that, for the life of me, I know looks exactly like the Yggdrasil in this book, but I don't remember which one I got first. Because I don't remember if I got this tree and then I got the book or if I had the book and then I found the tree. So I cannot remember for the life of me which one I had first. But, you know, myths. Um, <laughs> we'll see how much uh, uh, Norse and such mythology comes into this and such. And, you know, Asgard and the Nine Realms and everything like that. So we have Yggdrasil being represented. And depending on how far off in the distance it is, it could just be that this tree is literally at the center of everything in Elbath, kind of like the little bits that we saw in like Big Mom's flashback, but we're not sure yet. Um, so they're worried about the tree, which is fair. And then someone mentions we need to report this to the great sun god. So is there someone on the island pretending to be the sun god? Or is that like a title that kind of gets passed down within um the giant society like is that going to be like loki is the sun god and this is just the title that he holds or something like that we'll have to wait and see um so we see a bunch of the giants are running around they're trying to get you know water and stuff to put out the fire and they're like we see you know like these giant bees keep dropping out of the ground and they're like something's wrong with this what could have happened to these uh stinger mole is what they're referred to as is what they're calling the bees and they're just like they can't just fall out of the sky. I'm like, well, I would be worried too if giant bees were falling out of the sky. Um, mainly because I don't like bees beyond the, you know, I will let them live and such, but I don't want them near me um, for the most part. <laughs> and we have one giant that's like, people in the forest re <laughs> reported that the tremors were felt earlier, that the tremors we felt earlier were caused by the mighty ear god collapse when the mighty ear god collapsed and we have another giant <gasps> don't be stupid what could hurt an enormous rabbit um <laughs> yeah said so the rabbit channel uh so the this channel that literally has rabbit in its name um so 
That'll get touched on later at the end of the chapter for um, the fate of said ear god. And depending on stuff, hopefully will not result in the giants becoming enemies of the Straw Hats given the fate of the thing that they just called a god. Um, but I do want to point out, and we're going to see this in this chapter, how big these animals are in comparison to the Straw Hats. And we know that during Big Mom's flashback, there was, like, this bear and this wolf that she, you know, made, tried to make, make friends, and she ended up killing both of them on accident, um, because she didn't know her own strength. But it is kind of this question of, like, how big are these animals? Um, and also, um, when are they considered a god, and how, um, um, her, uh, heretical is it to um, eat one? Just, just, just asking for a friend in a straw hat, um, or in a helmet in this case. Um, so we see them all panicking, and then we cut to where we see this big uh, Stein castle, is what it's referred to as, and it's this beautiful looking um, Lego built castle. And we hear screams, and it's Nami. And she's like, it's still alive! And we're seeing this huge castle, which just I just think looks gorgeous. Um, and Nami's just like screaming and panicking. And she's like, what is with this huge bee thing? <laughs> and she she's just electrocuted one of the, the bees that just tried to attack her, supposedly. And we see her sitting on the floor, and we see, you know, the, the Lego marks all over the, you know, bumps on top of all the bricks beneath her. And Zeus has popped up, and he's like, Morning, Nami. Say, where are we? <laughs> and Nami is just panicking. He's like, no idea. Last thing I knew, we were still on the giant ship. And we just have this whole page of just Nami panicking, which is funny. And we get a great shot of, you know, her and her uh, Elbath gear. Um, so I've got the sword on her back. So she's just, like, screaming and panicking, which... To be fair, if I was in her position, I would probably be panicking too if I woke up in a giant building that looked like it was made out of Legos that made me look small. I'm in clothes I was not wearing when I passed out, or the last thing I remember, I was not in these clothes. My hair looks different, <laughs> and I don't know where anybody else is. I would be freaking panicking too. <laughs> So she's screaming, she's like, somebody save me, Luffy, Zoro, Sachi, Kun, I'll even take Usopp. So she's just panicking, she's like, what's up with me? I don't even remember changing, am I dreaming? Where is this place? <laughs> and then we hear, you know, someone, and she kind of like calms down for a second. And she goes, is this some kind of castle? And then she hears a shout of Nami. And she looks around, and she hears Usopp, and she's following Usopp's voice, and she's trying to run, but she trips on the Lego piece, you know, the, the tops of the Lego pieces as she's running, and she's like, what's wrong with this floor? It's all bumpy. <laughs> and she turns, and she turns around a corner, and there is a giant hedgehog there. Sister loves hedgehogs. Um, there's a giant freaking hedgehog there. And um, she is, I mean, I would be terrified of this thing too. I mean, like, I like hedgehogs. I liked the hedgehog that my sister had when we were, when I was growing up. But I would be terrified too if I was in this situation. And then there's a giant hedgehog on top of the giant bee that just tried to attack me. And she screams, which scares the hedgehog, so it's scared, and it puffs up, and, you know, is, like, all spiky ball now, and she's, like, just, Nami is terrified, and now it's angry, and now it's chasing her, and she's running away, and she's, like, wait, I didn't mean to startle you, and she's, like, Usopp, where are you, and she's just, like, shouting, and she comes over to, like, it's, it, it's, like, a balcony, or it's, like, looking down into, like, a, another courtyard area of the castle, and she looks down, and we see Usopp. Who is in the jaws of a giant cat wearing a crown and what looks like a cloak or a mantle? Uh, so there's that. <laughs> uh, and Usopp is just screaming in terror, in terror, which again, I don't blame him. I would be too in this case. And she's like, 
what are you doing there? Another monster? And she's just like, and Usopp's like, save me. And she's like, um, I've got my own problems. What is this, a monster manor? And so the hedgehog is still screaming at her. She grabs Zeus and is using him to, like, extend her climb attack out. So that way he can, like, electrocute slash maybe go into, like, his, you know, giant mace form. So he can, like, hit and then electrocute the, the uh, uh, hedgehog, which is what happens. And Nami's kind of getting, because of the force of it, she's getting knocked over the side of the balcony. And she's falling. She manages to electrocute the hedgehog. And I think it's I think it's Nami yelling at Zeus to just zap the damn thing. Um, so the hedgehog gets zapped. Nami's falling. Hedgehog's falling. Nami bounces off the cat. She thankfully lands okay. The hedgehog, however, does not bounce off the cat. It lands directly on top of the cat. Spikes down. Electrocuted. And that makes the cat, thankfully, drop Usopp. And then the cat gets electrocuted because of the hedgehog that is still, you know, kind of connected to um, Zeus and the climb attack. And it's getting electro electrocuted as well. And uh, it's not happy. And Nami lands next to Usopp. And then the cat just gets angry. And Nami's just like, I've got a bad feeling about this. And Usopp is just terrified. And he's like, ditto! Which is probably not going to be what it is in the uh, in the official translation, but I love that. And now the cat is just extra angry and charred and glaring at them. And now it's chasing them. I don't know what happened to the hedgehog. It's probably been knocked out. We'll see if the hedgehog shows back up again later. Um, but Nami's just like, you know, shouting at Usopp as they're both running. And Usopp is in Viking clothes as well. And he's got like a fake beard put on him, which is funny. <laughs> um... So that's funny. And she's just like, hey, Usopp, do you know anything about this place? And he's like, I remember shrinking on the giant ship. Next thing I know, I'm here with you. And, you know, so they're running and we're getting expedition, exposition out of the way. And Nami's like, wait, that booze. Didn't he say it could cause hallucinations, which is a reference to the absinthe, the green fairy stuff that they were drinking at the end of the chapter, at the, at the uh, uh, last chapter um, during the big party. And they get to another balcony, which seems to lead outside, and they look down onto, it is like another courtyard thing, but it's like, you know, a big courtyard outside that looks like it's even got like a waterfall or something like that made out of Legos and stuff, so there's that. And they're like, it's a dead end. Oh man, we're so high up. And so this cat's coming at them. And uh, I think it's Usopp, and he's like, there's a chance this is a hallucination, right, Usopp? Or, right, Nami? Um, he was like, then I might be seeing a cat monster, but he turns and Ami's just like, um, and he's just like, it's probably just an illusion. Whack. The cat just across Usopp. So Usopp might get some new scars from this battle. Um, Nami's terrified because Usopp just got hurt and he got, f and now the part of the building that they're in is collapsing. And the way that we're seeing this thing collapse is, yeah, it is kind of like the pieces falling apart, but it also just looks like general rubble falling apart um, in this design. So that'll be interesting to see. And, you know, again, this stuff in the live, in the, you know, in the anime will get a little bit more drawn out, which is fine. We see Usopp and Nami flying out of the castle uh, as, it, as they fall, um, and Nami's following. And the cat's following, and they both land, and by the time they somehow reach the bottom, the cat turned into a lion? Because Pokemon Evolution, and it leveled up with attacking Usopp? I don't know. And it, it, it finally evolved? I don't know, but it's it's the same cat. It's wearing the same crown. So, yeah, it, it, it evolved. Um... And so it's now staring down at them angry because it's like, oh, and there's also, you know, skeletons underneath them. So that's good, too, um, where they landed. And Nami's just screaming like, it's suddenly turned into a lion. We're doomed. She's like, snap out of it, Usopp. We're going to die. And the cat is like roaring at them. And Nami just picks Usopp up and is like holding him over her, using him as like a human shield. 
which I'm pretty sure Nami has done in the past, and it's always fun watching Nami and Usopp have to be teamed up, although we did just have them team up a fair amount while they were dealing with Ulti and Page 1 and Big Mom throughout the end of the Onigashima uh, battle. Um, so we'll see what other um, <laughs> uh, uh, emotion, you know, development we get in this time frame uh, in regards to uh, character development with that. Um, but she's just like terrified, which I don't blame her. I am, I would be terrified too if this was happening to me. And so she's just terrified trying to use Usopp as a human shield. And then she hears Nami-san. And of course this just literally turns into, um, so I like this page and the, in the, uh, in the uh, talk, in the summary of the chapter, they were saying how this reference seems to reference um, a double page spread that was, I think it was in chapter 162, um, when they're running around in the deserts of Alabasta, uh, trying to get to, I think when, this is still when they're trying to get to, um, the Oasis town that they're, you know, get to Yuba. Um, I think this is still during that time frame. And what happens, uh, in that one is it's, Sanji, Luffy, and Zoro are all teaming up and they all attack a giant Sandora lizard that they end up taking down. And in this case, it's all three boys showing up again. So we got Monster Trio and it's uh, Sanji is setting up, I sentence you to death for uh, making my beloved cry. Ifrit, Jambe, uh, Epule, and Luffy's like gear forth, gum gum, elephant, and Zoro is doing three sword style. Um, Kalasutra, Great Dragon, and the cat's just, and the lion is roaring at them, and then it gets hit by all three attacks at the same time. And it's Twister, Whip, Strike, and Nami's just like, ah! And Usopp is, ah! While the cat's being attacked, while the giant um, t uh, lion is being attacked, and then it falls, and as it's falling, it turns back into the cat. So... Again, I'm assuming this will get explained, and it's possibly, like, because, like, the, the crown gets broken, because Sanji hits the crown, and it gets broken, so maybe it was something to do with the crown that made the cat turn into a lion, I'm assuming, I'm not sure, and then we get into the final, I love that this chapter ends with two double page spreads, uh, the second double page spread, uh, is... The cat's lying on the ground. It's knocked out and charred. Luffy's just sit, you know, you know, kneeling on it like Luffy does. Um, Zoro, so they're all in Viking gear. So Zoro is like in Viking gear with a cloak, and he's got like weird looking goggle thing, mask thing on. Sanji has like a sword, kind of the way Nami does. Which uh, in this shot we don't see Nami's sword with her, so maybe it fell off while she was falling. Or it's just something that Oda's going to have to add back in and post or something like that. Because it's like, we saw her have it before. And then it somehow either, you know, fell off. And then it's gone. And then, you know, it'll just get added back in. Because it's like, he's not used to drawing Nami with a sword. So, you know, you get the idea. And Ch and uh, so Zoro is like, did it turn? Just, did it just turn into a cat? In regards to the lion turning into the cat, Luffy's like, I wonder how this one, this <laughs> guy will taste. That rabbit we grilled up earlier sure was tasty. I love you, Luffy. Stop eating gods. Um, and Aru was one thing, and you didn't eat him, you just beat him. You don't need to eat every animal that you come across. It's, it's not a requirement. Um, so I don't know exactly what's going to result in this, um, how this is going to work. Um, they attacked a god and possibly another god. So there's that. And Sanji is just running over to Nami and he's like, Nami-san, I was really worried. And she's like, I was so scared when Usopp died. Sanji Kun and Usopp's just lying on the ground behind her. It's just like, I'm still alive and you're going to pay for that human shield stunt. <laughs> I love Nami and Usopp's relationship. I love it when they get paired together just because I love that, like, they're both 
scaredy cats. And of course, Us Usopp is stated to be like the, the technically the quote unquote weakest member of the crew. Um, but he's still like far stronger than like Luffy was at the beginning of the story or even partway through the story. He's probably not stronger than Luffy was like pre time skip, but still. Um, he's gotten a lot stronger. And Nami has gotten a lot stronger too. Um, plus she has Zeus in her climb attack now and everything. But I just find it hilarious when they get put together and we'll just see what happens with this and we'll see what other combinations we're going to get here. And I know that there are the theories going on right now that, oh, Vivi's actually going to end up meeting up with the other Straw Hats that she hasn't met yet. And then we still don't know where Chopper is. Um, <laughs> but so we um, cut outside of the castle again or to the background of the castle where we see this giant, the giant tree in the background, which is Yggdrasil all twisted around itself, which is so cool looking. Um, and someone's like, not again. And I think it's Nami just complaining about like them being in this type of a situation. And Luffy's just happy. And so they're all in, yeah, they're all in like Viking clothes. So it's very reminiscent of like one of the cover um, color spreads that Oda did a long time ago, like a bunch of them in like Viking gear, um, which I really like. Um, and now it's kind of getting a payoff here. Uh, and Luffy's just like, sounds like there might be even bigger ones around. If they, uh, look good, I'll get you some. <laughs> I'll, I'll get us some. So he's just thinking more with his stomach, which is the way Luffy normally thinks, unless one of his friends is in danger or there's something funny going on. He tends to think with his stomach. Zoro's like, let's prioritize finding the sea in our ship. We need to establish the crew's safety. Which is true, and that is good first mate logic in his regard. They do need to find the ship. They do need to figure out where the rest of the crew is. And they kind of need to confirm that they're on Elbath. I'll go, admittedly, if I ended up in this type of a situation and I'm in Viking clothes and there's a bunch of giant things around me, I'm probably going to assume that if I'm in the One Piece world that I am on Elbath, given this situation. <laughs> and be like, okay, well, I need to figure out what's going on here and then um, make sure that I don't anger the giants. So I'm not going to kill a rabbit. Um, but I've never been in this situation. I've never been isekai into this situation, or at least not that I'm aware of. And Sanji is like, yeah, if you're gonna, if we're going after food, uh, don't forget that B battalion and their hive. It'll be insane to waste them since they're so nutritious. And now Sanji's thinking about cooking bees. I am aware that there are cultures around the world where they actually do eat bees. Um, and things like that. And of course there's honey involved there probably. Or it's like, just imagine how much honey giants would use. Um, this island full of giants. That'll be so cool to see. And Nami is just like, how are you guys taking this place in stride? Where the hell are we anyway? And Nami is just like crying in tears of panic, which is probably, I would be closer to like Nami and Usopp in this situation, I think, than Zoro or Luffy or Sanji in this situation um, for the way that they are handling things because they are on two different ends of the, uh, on the spectrum. And I would probably be closer to the Nami and Usopp side for panicking. Um, but I would, I would hope I wouldn't panic as much. And uh, the author, uh, the editor's note is into the unknown cover and color spread upon return. So we have a break next week, which is fine. Um, we will have a color spread next week. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll get a color spread involving, you know, all of this. Um, or it'll just be another fun cover page spread. And then we'll get like a color spread later on that'll show more of the, you know, the straw hats in their Viking outfits. Um, and, you know, maybe get a sneak peek at some of the other things. But, yeah, I love the fact that this chapter kind of boils it back down to, like, the, the first five crew members. And they're in this giant place. And, you know, we get to see their personalities again. And it's been a while since we've had, you know, these five together specifically. We've had, you know, Sanji and Zoro having to do stuff during Onigashima where they, you know, dealt with stuff. And then they each went to go deal with, like, Queen and King and... You know, and, you know, Luffy and Zoro, we get a lot. We got some of that in Onig uh, during Onigashima and during Wano and stuff like that. We got a lot of, like, Nami and Luffy during a whole cake, um, which, you know, for Nami Luffy fans, you know, I, I like them. I ship them. I'm fine with that. 
Um, Usopp and Nami pairing up is funny. Um, Usopp and Sanji always seem to get along pretty well, too. So it's like seeing those two together is kind of fun. Um, we haven't really had Nami and Zoro pair up that much for a while. They were kind of paired up a little bit in Alabasta. Um, when they fought uh, Mr. One and Miss Doublefinger. So seeing those two kind of pair up again would be kind of, you know, a little bit nostalgic there. Um, and again, you know, wherever Chopper is, I don't know. He might be somewhere else in the castle. But since he can talk to animals, he might just be able to help with translating, which would be useful. Um, Chopper is now the king of the castle. That was a movie. That was one of the One Piece movies. Chopper became king of an island. Um, <laughs> don't ask. Um, but, yeah, it's like... We haven't seen... Well, I was trying to think of, like, some other pairings for, like, these five specifically that we just haven't seen for a while. And I'm like, we haven't really had, like, Luffy and Usopp running around together for a while. Or had Luffy or Sanji running around uh, too much for a while. We had a little bit, a little bit of, like, Luffy and Sanji stuff in, in Whole Cake. Um, with, like, their fights and everything. So there's kind of that, but it's like, yeah, let's get, you know, some other, you know, I love it when we get different crew combinations that either we haven't had for a while, in this case, these five, um, or ones that we haven't really had much interaction, you know, much interaction between them, you know, as a duo or as a group. So we'll see here, and of course, you know, <laughs> they got three of the top four and then two of the bottom uh, all paired up together in this regard. So we'll see what happens here. Um, I believe that was everything I wanted to point out. Um, for Because uh, there's like so much action and battle stuff that happens in this chapter, there's not a lot of, of other stuff for me to talk about. Um, I really like, I, I love the motif of the Legos and everything like that. I love that idea. Um, and we'll see how that plays out, how that's going to work into like the, the structure of like the town that they're in. Um, how this castle is part of this, um, when they're actually going to get around giants and stuff like that, what's going to be the outcome from Luffy and the others eating a giant rabbit god, um, we'll see. Um, I had actually prepared yesterday to be in a shirt that had, like, Idrisil on it, but the chapter wasn't up yesterday, and we have a Husker game today, so that takes precedent. We have a Husker game tonight, so... If we win, that'll be our fourth win in a row this season, I think. And if we if we don't, we've still got three in a row so f or still had three in a row for wins, so we'll see what happens. <sighs> That's what I have for this. I'm actually glad this went well. My camera was giving me crap earlier and not looking right, so it's it's better now. Um, so I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. We have El Bath. And I have a tree. Bye.